Hello there, welcome back to Simon Shed and hope you're all well. Hope you're keeping safe in the uh, current lockdown if you're in the UK. And uh, thanks very much for all the new subscribers. Seem to have been a bit of an uptick recently, so that's great. And thanks for all the comments on the last video about my goals. So yeah, let's keep the videos going. Today we've got uh, part two of the Z21 series so we're looking at uh, how to set up the uh, Z21 uh, DCC system and sort of add get it all plugged in get the software set up and add your first loco so let's take a look starting with the physical setup so you got the Z21 box itself and uh, this won't take long it is very very simple simply take the Ethernet cable plug it into the LAN port on the back of the Z21 take your layout wires and screw them into the green uh, terminal and then plug that into there so those go off to the layout and obviously plug the power adapter in to there and you've got the other box which is the router so again very simple we've got the power lead And we can ignore this one. Uh, this is just another Ethernet cable which I plug into my home router so I can have internet in the shed. That's not strictly ne necessary. Uh, that's the other end of the uh, Ethernet lead that goes into the Z21 box. And that's about it. So as I say, it's not part of the standard setup, but uh, I have these plugs so they send network signals over your power lines and uh, that is where that grey lead goes and there's another one in the lounge next to the uh, Virgin Media router so that's how I get internet into the shed but that's more of a, a sort of advanced sort of setup so we won't uh, we won't worry about that here next we're going to need the app so on your device go to your App Store and search for Z21. Now ignore the one with the uh, sort of blue background and the red train, that's the old app. We don't want that one. We want the one with the white writing and the black background, that's the new Z21 app. You can see down here, bottom left, there is the Z21 updater app. I will cover that in another video, so I'm going to download that now. It is worth getting just to make sure your Z21 is up to date in terms of the firmware. Now, for any of your commands coming from the Z21 app to actually reach your layout, you obviously need to connect the uh, iPad or Android tablet or phone that you're running the Z21 app on to the router. So what you want to do is go into settings and into Wi-Fi and you should see a Z21 network appear. And you just need to get the password off the bottom of the router. Enter that. Don't worry, I'm not actually giving away my real password here. I have changed it, but that's, uh, again, something for a, a different video. I think we'll just stick with the standard setup for now. And yeah, once you are joined, you should notice that if you go into the Z21 app now, in the top right, the little indicator should be blue, which tells you that you've got a successful connection to your layout. So we open the app and we have to give it permission to sort of connect to the network, otherwise we can't do anything with it. And you get a bit of an introduction on various things uh, that you need to know. Some useful tips, so worth having a look at those. And you have to accept the privacy policy. So what we're going to do is have a quick whiz around all of these features. Um, we've got the three three buttons on the left, three on the right, and the middle one, which is the play button, where you control the trains. So I'm going to whiz through each of the sections quickly, but then we're going to sort of go back and concentrate on the actual setup process. So firstly, the big play button in the middle 
is where you play with the trains. That's where you control everything from. So you can see if you've got a tablet device, you actually get two sections of the screen. And at the moment, we've got one half of it controlling a loco and the other half of it controlling the layout, i.e. the point switches and so on. So you slide your finger up and down the throttle to control the loco speed. And you've got various functions as well on the left, such as lights. And then the, the other half of the screen on the right is where you can control things like points on your layout. Switch the points. And it will show you the, uh, the sort of route in green if you have that uh, set up to show. And you can configure this however you want. Have multiple, have two locos throttles on the same screen. And you can slide along the uh, view at the bottom to choose different locos. So configure that however you like. You can also tap these little red four square icon to get a bigger view of your locos. Let's have a quick look at the vehicles section now. This is where you add and remove and configure your locos. So you've got the list along there, the little plus button to add one. We'll come back to this in more detail, but we'll just whiz through it quickly for now. And you can edit and delete locos with the button in the bottom left. Or you can just swipe your finger across and delete. Be careful with that because there is no confirmation. It just deletes it straight away. Functions, so for a particular loco, if it's got lots of DCC functions like lights and sounds, you can set those up in the functions section. Driver cab is for a sort of roco specific um, locos that have that function, so we're not gonna cover that. Traction is actually uh, double heading and so on. And again, video is for, for sort of um, Roco locos that have that uh, video function. Now let's have a look at the control station. So this is where you can actually sort of draw your layout and put the points on so that you can control them. And it's a sort of drag and drop interface. Fairly simple to use. And again, there's so much to this uh, sort of system. I do need to do this as, a, as its own separate video, really. Uh, there's quite a lot to it. So you select which um, type of thing you want to add, and then you just tap to add, as you can see, <laughs> multiple uh, items of that type. But as I say, this is just a quick look, a quick overview. I'll go through this properly in another in another video, I've nearly finished setting up my track plan, so we won't save that. Next, programming. We will come back to this because you do kind of need to program the first loco as part of the setup. But that's where it lives. Driver cabs, as I said, is uh, some of these loco Trains have uh, this cab feature with video cameras built in. Layouts is where you set up the layout. So there's a default one set up for you already. And obviously we'll need to uh, set up one specific to us. And settings things worth mentioning here we can you can configure the sort of color of the text and the size of the text and so on and things like what happens when you press the stop button you can configure lots of different things it's worth having a, a scroll through these and having a read because uh, they're mostly just sort of preferences on how you prefer it to work so definitely worth a little look can change what happens when you uh, press the stop button as I say you can allow importing of layouts via Wi-Fi 
Not sure why you would turn that off. I suppose if you were at an exhibition maybe and someone was trying to mess about. And again, perhaps for an exhibition or sharing your layout, you can you can set a password so that uh, people have to know the password to be able to control the layout. But yeah, have a read through these and uh, set everything up to your liking. So there, if you control your points, you can make the sort of path green if the points are in the right direction. So that's worth leaving on, I think. And you can invert the driving direction if you've set everything up backwards. <laughs> Z21 settings, you won't need to do the, anything with this unless you've messed about and reconfigured your Z21 box to be a different IP address. And the reason you would do that is if your home network is on a different uh, a different address and you need to change that, but that's kind of an advanced thing, I would recommend leaving that well alone. So let's start the actual setup. We're going to want to press, go into layouts and press the plus button to add our layout. And enter the name, it's going to be Awesomeville. And uh, we're going to leave that on the default schematic theme and add that in. So you can see the tick and the orange text. That means that layout is now in use. You can switch by tapping on the layouts to take whichever one you're currently you want to use in use. Uh, we could also delete that uh, default one if you wanted by again just swiping from right to left. And once you've created your layout, you'll want to add your first loco to it. So we go back to vehicles and again press the plus button and you need to add in certain things like what address the loco is set to. Give it a name. We're going to add the class 20 that I have. Uh, class 24 rather, in BR Blue. So name them as you see fit. You can even uh, put them in a category if you like. So I've, there I've created a category and added that. You can sort of group those together however you like, or just ignore that if you want. I usually display the speed in miles per hour. It's just a display thing really, it doesn't have uh, any effect as such. You've got some preset images that you can choose, but obviously these are sort of Roco Fleischmann locos. Or you can obviously uh, take a picture of it. Uh, if you've got any images stored, you can use the photo library or you can use the camera. Now I'm going to skip ahead. I think it took me about four attempts to sort of get the lighting right and a nice clean background. I would advise doing it on a white background rather than on your layout because the images are quite small in the selector so uh, it's worth putting it on a white background so it stands out more but essentially uh, you just take a photo of it and it appears in that box so eventually we do get uh, a decent photo that we're happy with and again the max speed is just sort of display thing you can set that to 500 miles an hour if you like and it won't, it won't actually do anything it's just when you've got full throttle, that's what will display, basically. Then we've got the functions. So this being a fairly uh, simple loco, we've just got lights. So you can have that as a switch, on and off. You can have it as a push button, so on is when you're holding it, and off is when you release it. And you can have a time as well. 
you notice here that I'm on time and there's a bit of a bug because a new field should appear to let you set the time but uh, it doesn't seem to appear uh, it will do later on but yeah we just want a switch to switch on and off the lights so you choose a symbol that represents the lights and you give it the function number now we've gone back to the basic setup just to quickly change the DCC address to 1 which is what the loco is set to so for any other functions there are many many images that you can add you should be able to find one that's relevant to the sound or feature that you're using and you see the, the C1, 2 and 3 you can have sort of three uh, sections of uh, DCC functions so yeah, now we've gone back to that button type and set it to time you can see the time intervals actually appeared this time so I'm not sure what went wrong last time but that's uh, you would push the button and then it would switch on for that many seconds so if we now go back to the home screen and press the big play button in the middle because we've set our new layout to active and we've added our new loco to that layout that's what appears and we can try and uh, control it you can either tap anywhere on the throttle or you can hold and slide your finger up and down the throttle and the arrows next to the picture are obviously forward and reverse in terms of setting the direction that the train is going to travel in and we can see our function button for the lights as well but what if we needed to change the DCC address value then we would go back to the home page and go into CV programming ignore the first two tabs for now we're going to uh, go over to manual programming that tab we want to go on to program address now what I've got is just a, a bit of track that I've made as a programming track so I'm going to unplug my main layout and I'm going to plug in the programming track it's literally just a length of track with two wires soldered to the end of it so that we can I recommend you do this just keep everything simple and just have a bit of track that you can put one loco on so you're not going to change the settings for anything else there's no complications just keep it simple and program one at a time so put that loco on the programming track and you can actually read uh, the value that it's set to so green in the top right means we're in programming mode and we've just typed in a new address and pressed set CV we've gone to our loco and we've changed that to 17 because that's what we set the loco to on the programming track and then we can go back into the play and press the play button and just test that that's uh, had the desired effect and that you can now control it you see underneath the picture of the loco it is now telling us it's number 17 that's the new DCC address and because I actually want it set back to one I'm just going to go back in and and set that back again so you can press the read CV button just to check that it's uh, got the right value but just uh, just set that back to one so that uh, I don't get confused next time I try and control this train so there you go hope that was useful uh, there's certainly a lot to it I didn't think the sort of basic introduction setup video would be uh, would be that long but uh, hopefully you find that useful and now that's out of the way we can sort of look at some more complicated features uh, the more I look at it as I said the more I find uh, the more ideas I have for different videos on the Z21 uh, so we'll definitely do uh, CV programming and uh, 
sort of track uh, plan set up and uh, yeah many many other sort of features of the loco as many as we can get through really so yeah thanks very much for watching please uh, subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you soon Perfect.